and we're back with some more RimWorld, and it has been a while. The uh, theme of this playthrough is going to be sort of SWAT wizards. Imagine a, a SWAT team, but they're wizards. So, you know, combat gear and wands, or staves and combat gear, or, you know, M4 assault rifles and wizard robes, whatever. Uh, mods are running with for this. Colorblind minerals, because I'm not allowed to remove that now because some people seem to like it. So, yeah, okay, we got colorblind minerals. I've put in facial animations, but with vanilla texture so that it's not, you know, too anime-esque. I want to look, you know, mildly realistic. Then we've got vanilla expanded framework. There is some dislike for vanilla expanded, but by and large, most people recommended the bejesus and lots of these things. Uh, since we want wizards, I was going to go with RimWorld of Magic, but I would advise that is incredibly broken. Vanilla Psycast Expanded is only a bit broken. Eh, we'll see. We're, we're going with huge mods here. We've also got Vehicle Framework for Vehicle Expanded. Reason for this? Well, the SWAT teams are going to need to drive around in some sort of vehicles, you know, so yeah, let's throw in vehicles. Why not? Vanilla Weapon Expanded so we can get laser beams. So SWAT wizards with lasers. That seems interesting. Uh, we've thrown in Winston Waves. I've been advised they're a pretty fun storyteller with a lot of wave attacks, so why not? Pirates expanded. The only reason this goes in is so we can get war caskets, and war caskets expanded to build on top of that. It's sort of like you entomb someone inside a mechanical suit of armor and they can never get out of it again. So I'm thinking Warhammer 40k Dreadnoughts type thing, so I'll give it a shot. Why not? We've included the Void Storyteller in case we get bored of living, and we can just turn that on and, you know, see how long it takes for us to die. And we've thrown in the Void Faction because I suppose it just seemed like an entertaining thing to throw in, and that is it. That is all the things we're going to be running with. And we're just going to start off the colony, and there's this low-orbit crash. I think this came with the Pirate Storyteller, but... Yeah, it seems different. It's different from all the other ones, so let's give it a go. I figured this should at least be fairly handy. Now, we've got all these storytellers down here. We're going with Winston Waves. Uh, basically, battle-hardened guy, blah, blah, blah. Attacked by enemy waves increasing in size, but you, size, but you will be rewarded for each victory. Uh, let's just start on losing his fun. Uh, reload any time because, well, if we lose the save, we're boned otherwise. And let's see what it brings us up. Estelle, now let's just randomize this a little bit. Grab something random, uh, hit generate, and off we go. Considering the fact we're probably going to die pretty early on in this one, I think we'll take it pretty handy and just go somewhere near these two places. These two places can or will trade with us at least reasonably soon. The merchant company is neutral and these guys here are also neutral, so we can trade with both of these. Everyone else around here wants to kill us, but that seems pretty reasonable. I was thinking right here. Marble. Perfect. That's all we really need. Large hills, close to a road. I don't even like large hills normally, but I think we're going to need to be very defensive considering how quickly we're going to get our asses handed to us. Right, ideologically, we don't care. We'll go with... We'll go, we're going to go with one we build up over time. I think we'll just start with Supremacists. Yeah, it's just all the rest. I mean, if you want to go with a Raider meme right now, it means you have to raid a lot. I would prefer to stick with something that allows us to at least start up. That gives us access to shooting specialists, which we won't use for ages. A few minor changes to the religion here. We're called Morally Reddit Adjacent. Uh, the religion is mostly that, you know, we're not here to do lots of horrible evil things. We're just here to survive and we'll do whatever it takes is necessary to survive, which might be some morally evil things. But it's all in the purpose of survival. Uh, for corpses, we're going from ugly to don't care because that just annoys me. Normal research, let's just make that very fast. I would prefer to knock research out as quickly as possible. Normally you're just waiting around for things to happen, so gonna get a few research bits would help us. Oh, relic-wise, we've got a couple of Zeus hammers. I don't know how much we're gonna hunt them down. And we've got an ideal, hunt, uh, an ideal minigun. This is a charge minigun. Turns out one of the things we can get is charge shotguns, charge rocket launchers, charge rifles, charge pistols, charge miniguns, charge LMGs. There's a whole bunch of weapons that have been added in here by the vanilla weapons expanded kit. We'll find out as we go. It should be interesting. Also, we've got a bunch of these festivals we've put in. What I'm going to make them is add a date and what to do is discover ancient complexes. I was going to go with give us new members. That's probably the most powerful way to use these is just 50% chance of a random recruit. I don't want to do that because I think we would grow too fast, and that's a little bit overpowered, in my opinion. I don't really care about the leader name. I barely ever assign the leader role out, just on the grounds that we don't really need it. Uh, moral guide is usually pretty handy. Uh, the melee specialist, I don't think I've ever really used either. Shooting specialist, I am rather fond of. Hey, we'll leave pretty much everything else the same. Let's get started. I have to pick from these six, no matter how bad or good they are. So let me go through them and figure out which ones I want to keep. 
we have not a single one that's any good at construction, which I classify as pretty much essential for any colony. So I'm going to pick one and randomize them. Uh, we're going to take this one. Whoever gets uh, construction, we need a construction with a flame in it at least. Uh, we'll stop on them, whichever the first one is, and we have no choice. Oh, seriously, a pyromaniac with chemical fascination. Well, welcome to the team, buddy. Now, the reason I don't allow myself to reload, reload too much on these and you just have to pick what comes up, it's just more entertaining. I mean, they're a good shooter, good melee, good construction, artistic. It's just they're a pyromaniac with chemical fascination. Little bit, little bit of a problem, but we can work around that, hopefully. Next up, I'm thinking we have to lock in this pawn, namely because they've got social. They're the only one. No one else has any skill at social whatsoever, so we would need them to do all the recruiting. This also knocks out intellectual, and normally what you want is social, intellectual, and medical, so they don't have the medical, that's fine. Though I would prefer next up to get someone who's going to be cooking plants and animals. So I think we may be... Yeah, we're in trouble. We've only got one cook, so that kind of locks that one in. This one gets locked in because of social, uh, this one gets locked in because of cooking, but that also gives us mining, plants, we're only missing animal here, we even got medical under this one. We're just, uh, that actually leaves us one pawn left to choose from. This last pick was kind of brutally difficult, we excluded this one, no dumb labour, we don't want it, uh, but that left me between these two. This one I liked because of the artistic. I nearly get a few early statues would really help with morale by just cranking up the, the beauty in an area. However, this one comes with fast learner, which means they'll just learn stuff so much quicker, and they've got high intellectual, so I think we'll be able to crank out the research a little bit faster with them, and both of them have animals, which is all we really want. Probably should go with this one, but I think we're going to go with this one. Now, considering we're probably going to die pretty quick, let's just stick some temporary names on these uh, fodder people. I decided it'd be more fun if the patrons got to die. So we've got Tyler Sudol, uh, we've got Bjorn Longren, uh, Chris Amber... Uh, Amber... 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 I really thought I could get that one better. Chris. Hey, Chris. And then we've got Volchek. W's or V's, right? So Volchek, Volchek, Simski, Volchek, whatever. Okay, fine. Let's, let's start this up and see how we go. All right. The three of you wake up in your crypto sleep sarcophagus. I thought it was four, right? Okay. Never mind. That. Wait, no, it is four. We got four people right here. Ooh, is that smoke particles? When did that get introduced? Hey, we got... Bjorn, Chris, Bo, Bo check what? They're in a crypto sleep casket? Right. Okay, this is a different start. And that looks to be a ship chunk gauntlet turret? Shots until barrel change? Medical ship crate? A uh, ship chunk reactor? Right. Well, that actual reactor keep running. That means that's about 1700 watts. Give me power. Yep, we start with a 1700 watt power generator. These pirates know how to party. All right, let's just, let me have a quick look around and uh, come up with a plan for how we're going to start this. And we seem to have started with, oh yeah, we have caves here as well. I want to make sure there's no bugs in any of them. I did a quick save and reload so that we could get our hands on the camera plus mod. Just means I can bookmark a location and then hop the camera back to that. Just makes it less jarring when I'm cutting between takes. All right. What I can see here, we have a ship reactor that gives us 1700 watts of steady power. We have a ship chunk battery that has no self-discharge and 100% efficiency. Which, yes, we want to protect that and not let it die. We also have this uh, ship chunk gauntlet turret. Well, I kind of want to wall in the battery so we can keep it safe, but I also want to give this thing a decent cone of view. Also want to wall in probably around here. Ah, oh, damn it, and probably across here. The thing is, this is going to be huge. We're going to need so much space to wall in. Would have been nice to maybe go over here and take on this really early on, but uh, I think with this turret, the power supply and all this, there's actually something here worth protecting. Uh, at the same time, there seems to be a fuel tank we can deconstruct, uh, a, sh a ship chunk volatile engine. I do not like the look of that at all, because it says it's going to detonate in about, ooh, I think it was six hours. So we're going to deconstruct that. And I'm pretty sure Tyler is our best constructor. Everyone else kind of sucks. Oh, reminds me. I want to get into schedule. We're going to go with the good old-fashioned biphasic sleeping schedule when the time comes. But for now, I think they can skip their first nap. They don't need it, and there's an awful lot that needs doing. Uh, then up there's going to be work. We're going to go into manual priorities and make some changes. Priorities are... Oh, they're complicated as all hell, but uh, some of these are quite simple in many ways. For example, Bjorn here, they're only good at social and intellectual. That means, well, wardening and research. That's it. That's all you're going to do. 
These ones all up here, they're all going to be two. Basic, child care, bed rest, doctor, patient, firefighter. If they've got a skill in doctor, they get two. Everything else gets a two because, well, you want fires to be fought, patients to go and get themselves medical tending, children to be taken care of, and basic stuff like flicking switches and things like that would be really nice if they get done quickly. Wardening, perfect. Uh, then we've got Tyler. This one's actually pretty easy as well. They've only got artistic and construction. Simplifies things an awful lot. Construction, art, done. Everyone has clean as their first priority and hall as their second. Oh, and one thing. Toggle automatically expanding the home zone around new constructions. That can go. We don't want them expanding the home zone around anything. They'll give them areas to clean. We don't want them doing that. Uh, next up, we got what? Wojcik. Wojc Wojc Damn it. Mm. Okay. They are trapped inside this thing, so we can't really do much with them just yet, but not too hard. Intellectual plants, animals. So, intellectual-wise, we put them on three, plants on three, and animals on three, but hunting is at two. Namely because Wojciech here, really good shooting. So, and they're a fast learner, so we're going to give them the charge rifle. There's a charge rifle around here somewhere, I can't see it, someone's saying it. There it is, charge rifle. So, charge rifle for Wojciech, we can send them hunting, and they should be able to pull in the meat, and at the same time, level up their shooting skill to above 10, which will make them solid in defense. And then that just leaves Chris. Chris here sort of overlaps a little bit. Wojciech under plants and cooking. Ha well, plants, sorry, plants and mining. No, no, I mean, it's just plants they overlap it. Uh, but cooking, they need to do. Mining, they're going to need to do. We're probably going to rip them out and planting and cutting. But there's going to be a little bit of overlap between theirs two jobs for the time being until we find a new person to replace it. That's it. Finished. And uh, next up, assignments. Everyone's going to be put on attack. We don't want them running away. Fight back immediately. Medicine's going to be on industrial tech or worse. In fact, we might drop that to herbal in a bit. Uh, food restrictions. Don't eat void monsters. That would be bad. Don't eat corpses. That would also be bad. Plants are fine. Eat as many plants as you could possibly get your hands on. Uh, re raw resources and all that. We put fur if they did not eat these. That would be good. And manufactured wise drugs, no. No, no. None of these are food. Just, just don't. Food wise, yeah, you can have all of this stuff. Oh, except for kibble. That's for animals. And hay, also for animals. And we would prefer them not to eat raw meat, so we're going to take that off the menu as well. A drug policy, we're just going to make a new one, we're going to call it standard. Standard drug policy. Basically, they'll take beer, smoke leaf, ambrosia, and psych IT if they need it, if their mood goes down below 35%. They've also got rum and wet red wine in here, which I'm going to have to figure out what kind of hmm, chemical consumption. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll worry about that later and have to do the math and figure out how much of that we can use if there's a safe dose interval. That one says one day for rum and 1.3 days for wine. We'll worry about more of that later. Having a quick look around, I think our plan is going to be very simplistic. We're going to make a big box room to start. That's pretty much the default for everything, but we're going to leave this gun outside it. Uh, we're going to try and keep our power supply inside it. That power supply seems irreplaceable. The gun, also irreplaceable. That battery, also irreplaceable, but... uh. Yeah, that's going to give us a really large bang if it ever does a Zist event. Let's hope Winston isn't feeling that way. Actually, where is Winston? Isn't Winston supposed to appear? He was here before I did the save. Oh, you know what? Never mind. Uh, we're going to chop down a bunch of trees. We are going to let... Oh, here we go. We're going to chop down a bunch of trees. We are going to let Wozniak, what, what, Wojciech, out of the crypto sleep casket. Uh, they can get around to harvesting oak tree. Yeah, what, oh, yeah. They're good at plants. Chris is good at plants. Both of them are going to start harvesting. And we're going to start deconstructing some of this junk. I think the ship nutrient paste we can leave. That take, that goes off in 24 hours, so we're probably going to need a fridge before we touch that. The medical ship crate we can leave as well for now. Though we're due a raid in five days. We'll have it defrosted by then. And the crypto sleep cast it, I think... Since we can use that again, I think we're just going to wall these in. Anything that's outside of our wall system will wall in for safety. And hopefully we can continue to use it long term. And any ship debris can be deconstructed. All right, get to work, you lot. When it comes to weapons, Bjorn over here is going to get a pistol. Tyler is also going to get a pistol. Both of them have shooting, well, okay, shooting. And Wojciech over here is going to get their hands on the charge rifle. And then I think we're going to get them to go do a wee bit of hunting. Well, maybe not just yet, but those horses look mighty tasty. Lots of meat, and they don't have a manhunter chance. Oh, there goes our first eaten without table. Yeah. Yeah, well, at least it didn't kill them, but it's fine. We'll get them a table soon enough. We just want a basic room. Once we've got a room in, we'll put in a table, some chairs, some beds. They'll be fine. Then we're going to run some power wires around the place and uh, wall in some of these more sensitive and delicate pieces of equipment. Almost ready to seal this sucker in, and we're going to put down a standing lamp as well, because why not? Ugh, i got to learn to 
Yeah, let's zone the dog out of there so they don't eat any more of our precious, precious meals. There's always something you forget. We now get to roof this area in. We've got a light up and running. I'm thinking it's time for a little bit of a table and some beds. Uh, we'll stick in just a table here, a few stools to keep everyone seated at. And then we'll throw in a three beds. They don't even need to be great beds. They just need to be anything at all. Done. And by this time tomorrow, they should be well sorted. Now that we're getting this up and running, it's time to put in a quick fridge. I just realized we've got power. We don't even have to wait. We don't need a fuel generator. Do We don't need anything. We've got 1,700 watts of power just sitting right there. Also, I'm going around walling in some of these more um, precious things, which I don't know how reliable they are. We'll put a wall segment there. And once that's finished, we'll put another wall segment there without hopefully walling anyone in. Just realized there's actually four pawns, not three. And I already built three beds. Uh, looks like someone's sleeping on the floor. Yep, well, we'll give you a sleeping spot inside, buddy. Sorry about that. Oopsie. Ah, they look so calm and peaceful. And hungry. It's going to be... I think once we get this fridge up, we can get whatever meals in there into this section. We've already eaten all of the survival meals. And then I'm thinking, well, horse meat will go really well in the fridge. Then we can throw on a quick kitchen. Though we are going to need some iron for that. We got that over there. And we've still got four days before the enemy show up. So we're, we're kind of okay. I think. What? The enemy now neutral void? They now consider you neutral and no longer attack you. This happened because Goodwill Zero has risen past zero. If Goodwill falls below... Why would they ever... I don't know how the void thing works. I thought they were basically... Void has sent an advisor to negotiate your new surrender. What? Um... I don't think we want to talk to them. I think talking to them would be death. Do we just not run away? They look heavily armed and there looks like a lot of- Look at the size of the sword on that one! Neurotonin. Caviar, that's that's nice. Red wine, hyperweave, void tech skin, excellent. What is that? Very good armor that appears to be light. Global work speed bonus, 300% move speed, plus three. What?! Are you kidding me? I knew it was... They were overpowered, but... Dear God! Void reactive. What is this? 280% max shield. Shield recharge? Insulate? Move speed bonuses? What's the move speed on this nut job? Move speed of 26.89? 20... 20... We're like at 5 if we've got a jogger. I need to install... Ah! Rimhood. But I've been able to see, I, I hate having to go in here to find people's speeds. It's just dumb. With the mod installed, we can now see their move speed. Rimhood is excellent for it. You had to do some modifications under content and all that, but got it all up and running. We can now see their move speed. Same time, installed, uh, damn it, what's in a way so you can go over there. We've installed Dub's Mint Mini Maps. This is just great for seeing what's going on on the maps. I can't live without it, it seems, because I immediately installed it when I was going through to put in the other one. All right, you guys, uh, uh, I don't think we've got much choice. I think they're just pretty much going to straight up kill us. I'm not sure what the point of these. Uh, maybe we should just run. Um, we're going to send Wojciech over and try and get them to annoy the Mega Sloth so the Mega Sloth attacks them, but see, I don't think see that doing really too much. Uh, we might need to open the Ancient Danger, but even then, I'm not sure it's going to do anything to these guys. They're just... Those guys look brutal. I think Winston Wave's little mod looks better down there, maybe. Or they... they uh, assuming we live that long. Not holding out a huge amount of hope. Okay. Megasloth's awake. No, I don't want the Megasloth coming towards us. That would increase the odds that it aggroes us instead of them. Okay, there we go. Megasloth's are. Oh, that worked out perfectly. Now run, 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 run. Um. You guys not gonna help out? How much damage is, it, is this thing getting done to it? I'm not seeing any damage. Iron skin implant. Right. X violence implant. X. I'm beginning to think that these void guys may be like a little OP. Um. Right. Yeah, and judging by that question mark, they actually want to talk to us. If they want to. Like, we either run away or we talk to them. I think I just talk to them. 
Yeah, yeah, we're just going to talk to him because it's death or leaving the tile, which seems a little bit odd for this early in the game. Hi, I hear you're a bunch of totally overpowered nutjobs that are here to kill us. Um, yeah, let's just go chat to whoever's in charge. Why can't I bring up a contact thing? Really? No one wants to talk to this guy. Uh, who's got our best social? Someone must be ready to talk to them. Come on, okay. A group of five well-dressed, heavily armed individuals with purple-colored masks and piercing blue eyes. Why do they all have blue eyes? Stare into your soul as they approach you. They come bearing biffs. They make it clear they've come to negotiate, not to fight. Well, that's good because, you know, we're not up for fighting them. They just seem uh, kind of OP. Greetings, we are void. I wonder why it's always in capitals. You are unlawfully trespassing in our newly annexed territory. You must leave this world at once or you will have to be forcibly, forcibly remove you. Uh, you have to do this planet effective immediately. The advisor sizes you up briefly as you think of your reply. You have three response options below. Uh, well, I'm not going to say something incredibly insulting. Respectfully decline the people with the big guns. Hmm. Beg for mercy. Try to plead to their humanity. They seem to be reasonable people. Oh, I don't think they are somehow. Oh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's beg for mercy and see how it goes. Ah, uh, please, there's no need to worry. We'll grant you 30 days extension. Consider this your final warning. If you are still here after your extension, we will return for you. Please uh, accept our token of hospitality, a leaving gift. Goodbye. Medicine and red wine. Okay. Eh, yeah, that's not too bad, to be honest. Uh, I really thought that was going to go a lot worse. Ah, these guys carry around caviar and red wine everywhere. Hmm, very nice. Okay, so we got 30 days. 30 days and then they go hostile and come back and try and kill us. And we have to hold off this? I don't think we can. Even like one or one of these guys would be almost unstoppable. That guy just face tanked a mega sloth. And then killed it by smacking it with the butt of his gun. And like none of them got a scratch. What could we do that's more damaging than a mega sloth trying to rip you apart? Uh... Hmm. Let me think for a minute. I have been doing some thinking here, and the problem is, these guys look absolutely fatal. Problem is, their equipment is just so rock solid. Now, my first thought was, Psychic Shock Lance. Knock them out, take their gear, we're up with them, right? Unfortunately, Psychic Sensitivity is minus 100% for all of their headgear. Every single one of them has no psychic sensitivity at all, meaning they're immune to psychic shock lances and psychic insanity lances. We can't even get them to kill each other. Maybe psychic powers, but we don't have any of them, and they're going to be back in 30 days. I don't know how many of them's coming, but one of them would probably be a huge problem. I mean, we could probably take one if we had a psychic animal pulser and turn the entire map against them. I think there may be other ideas. We have 30 days to take them on. I say we take money. We get lots of money in the next 30 days, and we use that money to buy ourselves a whole bunch of guns. Also, there's some other things we can get our hands on here. For example, they have heavy weapons. There is the anti-material rifle. 56 damage, lots of stopping power, massive range, huge armor penetration. I'm thinking that would be a good method. Also, maybe some other things. I mean, if they are neutral for 30 days, hmm, there, there's options, but that means we can't stay here. We've got to keep moving. Uh, which means this whole pirate setup of having this gauntlet turret and these ship chunk reactors not really going to be that helpful. Uh, so it means we'll probably just stay until the first Winston wave hits, take care of that, and then leave. Um, we're going to have to start hitting up these. Basically, we're going to have to crack open a whole bunch of these things and get as much loot out of them as we possibly can to buy hopefully enough weapons and armor to survive when the void come back. Yeah. Ooh, that nutrient paste thing had... A lot of nutrient paste meals in there. Uh, no one's going to be happy eating them, but at least it's keeping them full. All right. Um, yeah, and we're going to put in a cooler here to hopefully keep them from spoiling in the next 17 hours. Uh, guys, get on that. We've also got our hands on 120 chem fuel, which should come in handy if we ever get around to building vehicles. We did install that whole vehicles expanded thing, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a while before we get any of that research. We're going to have to start wandering around before we even get vehicles. These void guys are really throwing a spanner in the works. Well, I suppose that was kind of the point of the Void guys, wasn't it? To make things really, really uncomfortable. Oh, uh, we've also started harvesting all of the surrounding berries. We want these berries because these berries are going to allow us to tame horses and the horses are going to allow us to run caravans. 
which means we're going to need a fence post or something to hook them to. Yeah, we should probably put that down now. Minor problem with producing the uh, cooler. It turns out you need a craft a construction skill of five, which we don't have. So right now, Tyler is going to construct or deconstruct everything they can to try and... Oh no, they're further learning what's blood by 20%. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this stuff is going to be gone off in 11 hours. Uh, it is what it is. Ooh, yeah, and I should really change their schedule. I forgot to put them on by Phasic. All right, Tyler, it looks like your 20% progress cap from having learned too much in a single day has, has expired. Uh, that means it's time for you to get up and do some more construction. Damn it. Yep, yep, just get over there and prioritize deconstructing that sarcophagi. Uh, once that's done, you should hopefully have enough experience to start building that uh, cooler and then save... Oh, nutrient paste has seven hours. Come on, guys. Right, construction level five. Perfect. Get in there. Uh, I want you to build that cooler. We've got five hours left in this stuff and it's probably going to spoil. But at least you can maybe save the mega sloth and we'll get some meals out of it. Uh, and I should really start keeping track of how many days we have left before those uh, void people start coming to murder us. You, you're going to be of no use to us for well, much longer. We'll make you minus 49 for now. Uh, temperature in there is now... What is it at? 4C. 2? Minus 1. Okay, won't spoil. Acceptable food for everyone. Excellent. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking, we're going to need to get ourselves a cooker. We're going to need to get ourselves some pack animals. We need to move. We need to get out of here and go on a rampage. The plan here is relatively simple. We have Wojciech over here and they are taming stallions. So once they've tamed those stallions, we'll have the ability to caravan an awful lot better. Uh, we're going to take all of the resources we've got. We're going to take some food. We're going to basically cook up this meat into some simple meals. That'll survive for about three days. Uh, let's say two. Then what we can do is we can start caravanning. First thing we'll do is we'll hit up this location, a uh, body pond location, mining weapons and guns they have, and then we're going to start trekking. See, the thing is, we have 30 days before the Void become hostile to us. And, well, here's the problem. Void weaponry is absolutely brutal. This here is a Dusk Mag. It's the default weapon the Void people brought with them. I think four of them had it. It does 40 damage. It's got its stopping power and all that. This will mean nothing. The Charge Lance. Now, this Charge Lance does 38 damage. Very similar damage here to their Dusk Mag automatic rifle thingy. However, you know, it's a, it's a charge lance. It fires a hell of a lot slower, and it fires one projectile. The Dusk Mag fires eight. So in the time you, like, think of a Dusk Mag, the basic machine gun of the Void people, as basically eight charge lances strapped to each other. And then you've got a fair idea of the damage output it's capable of. Now, its accuracy is much lower than a charge lance, of course, uh, but the range is relatively similar. So you basically just have this massive potential damage output. And here's the problem. We're going to get our hands on those guns. And when we do, what happens to the rest of the world? Like, we won't care about any of the other factions. If you have a gun that does that much damage, yeah, who cares what the rest of the crowd show up with? So while I am concerned about fighting the Void, what I'm more concerned about is what happens after our people get their hands on Void weaponry and equipment. We're going to have to rush towards getting Void equipment and weaponry, use that to defeat the Void and survive, but in acquiring all their weaponry, we basically will be defeating all the other factions. There'll be no point even getting vehicles or anything else like that. I think it'll just be mostly fighting against the Void and then maybe become even more overpowered. My worry is that if we go the Void route, we just won't get to take advantage of all of these mechanics we've included, including the sidecasts and the vehicles and all that stuff. Or even the Warcasts. I'm kind of looking forward to making some Dreadnoughts. So what I'll do is I'll pin two comments below. There'll be a Void comment. If that gets the most thumbs up, then next episode what I'll do is I'll just go, go after the Void, get their equipment and become overpowered Void killing machines as quickly and efficiently as we can. Uh, the other one will be the... SWAT wizard's comment, if that gets more upvotes, what I'll do is I'll just do a quick restart, rip out the Void faction from the mods that the Void faction is not included, and we'll just skip forward really quickly and I'll import all of these characters over to the new save. And then we'll go about becoming SWAT wizards who are completely overpowered and murdering everyone. One, one or the other. I mean, it, it's much of a much, it just depends which mechanics people want to see. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see what the likes uh, or dislikes are on both of those comments before I start the next episode. And whichever one wins, that's the way we'll go. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck. Mm -hmm.